This sermon is brought to you by Shofar Christian Church. We hope that you will be blessed by this message. Our audio and video sermons are also available on Shofar TV to download and share. Hello, good morning everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. So you'll notice that um, we're going to jump straight into the message because we're going to do the theory before we do the practical. And uh, if you uh, thank you to Nani for um, stealing the thunder of what I was about to say. I mean, I, I can literally just sit down because that's exactly um, just with some slightly different scriptures. Uh, but if you don't mind, I'm also just going to pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to be able to stand here this morning. Thank you that we are still allowed in this country to gather openly. Lord, we think of those in Pakistan, we think of those overseas that are not allowed, that, are, that have to put their lives on the line. Lord, we, we, we pray for them, we recognize them, and Lord, we, we rejoice in the privilege that we have to praise you in this country. We thank you for the peaceful elections, and we thank you, Lord, that your hand would be upon that, and that we will be able to praise you for many, many more decades. In Jesus' name. That's actually not what I wanted to pray, but that's what the Holy Spirit told me to pray. Um, I, uh, I'm probably going to stare at you a couple of times as I kind of let the nerves calm down and as I, you know, gather my thoughts. But as, uh, as Henny said, um, you know, we, we decided to, uh, to do like a bit of a job swap. Usually I'm behind the drum set and he's behind the pulpit. Uh, we decided we're going to switch it around a bit. Uh, as Henny mentioned, the, the series that we are busy with, it's, it's something that the, that the Lord is dealing with this congregation in terms of what does it mean to walk with Him? How do we, and it's loosely bundled concepts, so you can have them in any order. It's not really a series. It's a bunch of stuff that is bundled together. Some, uh, Craig spoke on, you know, we are, we are God's temple. Uh, Jesus will be, always be central. Uh, and there are some very juicy lineups for um, like people like myself who are gonna be talking on some of the other, some of the other concepts. Also, spoiler alert, on uh, this one, if, if I don't do a good enough job, Steph and Basson will also be talking on this a bit later, which, uh, which I'm, I'm quite keen to hear, so I'm going to see if I can, if I can outdo it. Um, and then lastly, the, whatever I say, don't trust just what I say. Go and find in the Bible, go find it in the scripture, and if you have a problem with it, you can go complain to him, because he, he allowed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, I completely submit to, to you know, what, uh, his authority. So if he says, Lou, you're talking nonsense, sit down, then I sit down. Um, and with that, let's, uh, let's jump right in. So you will notice that I don't have any slides with me. That means I would love for you to actually, if you have your Bibles, your phones with you, grab that now, open up, get into that. We're going we're gonna to jump to some scripture. The garment of praise is, made, is, is actually mainly mentioned in one, in one place in the Bible. Isaiah 61 verse 3. So you can go to Isaiah 61. And then Johannes, can you go to Luke 4 verse 18 for me? Alright. So uh, I'm going to try something else this morning. Usually in, in, uh, in, in, in Jesus' times when, when uh, the Jews came together in the synagogues, uh, someone would stand up, take a scroll, they would read scripture and then sit down again and then someone else would also read scripture and sit down again and they would be kind of be, be teaching. So I want to ask uh, Megan, you read Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. The year of the Lord's favor. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord, for the display of his splendor. Thanks, Megan. Isaiah wrote this down and had, had the Lord told him to go and proclaim this to a country that was in captivity. Israel at that time was not 
function, it was not a functional country. There, they were, you know, kind of conquered and shipped off. I think it was to Babylon. I'm not sure. Um, but at this point in time, they are in captivity. And the Lord says, the Spirit of the Lord, well, Isaiah wrote, writes this, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to go and proclaim this, these things. And it's, it's just so, it's so counterintuitive. You know, you've, you've imagined us like being conquered by South Sudan, and then we get shipped off up into a place where we don't know their food, we don't know their culture, we, we're, we're put in different homes, we have to go and serve them, we don't have our own jobs. It's something completely different, you know? And then this guy comes along and says, the Lord says, I am here to give you a garment of praise, a spirit of heaviness, um, and we'll get into the rest of the points now, but it's just, just keep that in the back of your mind as we actually work through this. <clears throat> Johannes, can you read for me from verse 14 to 21? Luke 4, verse 14. Then Jesus returned in power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went throughout all the surrounding region. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the li liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all were, who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. So think about this. Jesus just came back from 40 days, 40 nights in the desert. Jesus, uh, Satan tried to tempt him. And he comes back and the Holy Spirit is upon him. And uh, if you think about this, it's like such a cool movie moment. You, he walks into the temple and, and uh, you can hear like the da, da, da music playing. He just walks in he's, and he's like, give me, give me the scroll. <laughs> Probably didn't happen exactly like that. But just that powerful moment where he reads this to a country that is under Roman rule. They are being heavily taxed. They are under a lot of economic pressure. You know, people are hopeless. And... You know, the, um, God has been silent for 400 years. And suddenly Jesus walks in and he sits down or he, he reads the scripture and he says, this scripture has been fulfilled today. How cool is that? Now, why do I bring in Luke 18? Is it just points to, um, so Jesus, Jesus, we, we are able to link that back to this Isaiah 61. And we know exactly that Isaiah 61 was written about Jesus. It wasn't, um, it's like clear evidence. It's not something we have to infer. And therefore, the verse 3 that comes right after it, you know, I have come to give you, to give, to give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness. And by extension then, we can, we can already see it's not, it wasn't just for the Israelites. Now, quite often we can make these general statements, you know, okay, you know, we are heirs with, with uh, you know, through Abram we are heirs, and, and we can make these, these general blanket statements of certain scriptures, but I actually just wanted to explicitly point it out to you, that Jesus came not just to give us life and life in abundance and stuff like that, but this very scripture that is fulfilled means that Isaiah 61 is about Jesus and what Jesus came to accomplish. And therefore, right, sometimes we need to go and question these things when blanket statements are made to say, yes, okay, well, Jesus came and he, or in the Old Testament, these things happened and this is now then for us. Often we get it wrong contextually. So this is just the base, the foundation I want to lay down to say 
this is so because the Bible said so, and we can actually draw that golden thread. Jesus came to give us these three things. Okay? Um, and I will focus on, on the third one. So, crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil for joy instead of mourning, a garment of happiness for a spirit of heaviness. Not a garment of happiness. It's a garment of praise. And it's quite interesting if we just, just think about that. Why, why a garment of praise? Because often when I think of praise, I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's about happiness. We should be jump on joy. And in the past couple of years of my life, I've experienced that to not be the case. But still, there's this thing, I give you a garment of praise. And then I started thinking about this whole thing. I was like, okay, but what, what is a garment of praise really? Take, just think about that. What, what is a garment of praise? And why is it given for a spirit of happiness? Because I think in, in, uh, in, our, in the charismatic church, we often are like, okay, yes, you know, faith and, and um, worship, praise. But we associate that with, I just need to be really optimistic. <laughs> and I just need to be really, like, you need to keep the positive attitude, man. But this is, this is being said to um, Israelites that are, that are under a lot of pressure. You know, you, they don't have their own sovereignty. They don't have in both cases. And sometimes we just don't have the, the, the happiness or the optimism. Sometimes that just isn't the case. Yet, this scripture stands. Why? Why? It makes no sense. It also is interesting when, when Jesus says, I give you a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Says, I'm giving you a directive that in your suffering, you must sing good songs about. For a spirit of heaviness. I want you to speak well of me while you're suffering. That's what he's saying. It's incredible. And I thought about this for the first time this week. And I'm just like, okay, Lord, what, what is, how, how does this all work? Because there is something there. Jesus said it, it is important. So if we think about what is, what is, uh, what sort of praise, you know, in the Old Testament was written in, in Hebrew. And uh, Hebrew have many words that kind of describe the same concepts and stuff like that. And the Hebrew word uh, that, the, that Isaiah wrote down for this phrase is tequila. Not tequila for the students. It's not a, it's not a garment of tequila. Okay? Tequila. I hope I, said, I, I pronounced that right. And tequila means praise, a song or hymn of praise. So specifically, refers to, I am giving you a garment of a song or a hymn of praise. Now, what do we do with music? We sing along to it. We, you know, it's, it's something that, is, that has a melody. It is a song or a hymn. It can be read. It can be, you know, we, we can sit down and in times of reflection, we can sit down and think about scripture. But here it says, I am giving you a garment of a song of praise to me. And then kind of it started started making sense to me. You know, how many times, or those of us who, who, uh, who like to go to the gym or who, uh, whenever you watch a movie, when, when, that, when that power song comes on. You know, it's uh, probably the most common one is the Eye of the Tiger. You know, da, 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 da. Who of you, like, you know, when you're watching the movie, you're like, okay, no, no, I'm, I'm in this, I'm in this, let's see. I mean, Amma, do you have any, any, any interesting playlists you listen to? See, he's, got a, he's got a couple, right? I personally love it. It's great because something changes. When you listen to music and you're, you're into it, something changes. How much more in praise? 
But yet I, when sometimes when I come into, into a Sunday, this is what I do. I'll praise you anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for someone like Etienne, that is probably the best praise you ever had. <laughs> because what's happening is what's happening in his heart is is like a rave part. It is great. It is genuine. For uh, and you know I. Uh, we, we had the privilege of hosting some students uh, not too long ago with, with Home Away From Home and we had such good conversations about how did they end up in church and, you know, with, with you know, charismatics and charismaniacs, you know, the, if now everybody needs to jump. Okay, now we're all, and it's like the, the death of the introvert in that, you know, it's like, what do you, and it's, 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 it's not the action. It's not that. Anyway, it was just really interesting. It's getting back to this this thing of a hymn of praise. Now, what is, what is praise? Praise is an expression of respect and gratitude. So, it's still like a bit of a messed up equation. Jesus comes along and says, and, or God comes along and says, when there is a spirit of heaviness, I am giving you a song to sing towards me and sing my praises and my gratitude. Now, for the, for the statisticians and the mathematicians and the, the engineers, like, or at least to me, you know, I'm, a, I'm an economist by trade. I do a lot of statistics and a lot of coding. Like, sometimes it's just, it's not, it just it doesn't compute. <clears throat> and while I, was, um, while I was preparing for the sermon, I, I actually just prepared for the sermon by singing a lot of songs, if I'm honest. Um, and the, I, I made a, a garment of praise playlist on Spotify. And I took a lot of the songs we sing in church, made sure they were theologically correct, and that's what I did. On the way to work, as, as often as I could. Because I was like, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to just throw scripture at you, and having done none of this, it would, it would be completely empty. And as I was praising um, on, on Thursday, I was in Johannesburg for work, and I was in my hotel room, and I was walking around with my headphones on. Uh, and I'm like, Lord, it's getting quite close to Sunday. Um, I, just, I don't have anything written down yet. Um, but I've been, singing, I've been singing a lot of songs, and I've been praising you a lot, so that's all we do. We do yeah? And this thing just drops into my spirit. And it's, it's not something you will find in Scripture, but I think it really captures the essence of quite a lot of Scripture, that if you go and read the song, Psalm 66. Um, once again, such a great open to my, to my sermon, because yesterday I was thinking, I need to get some songs in there as examples. And I couldn't find one that just fit for me. And so I was just so glad, so great that we get to preach the sermon this morning and not me. Uh, but the thing that dropped, the, it's just, it was one of those moments where the Lord was just like, there, this is, this is the punchline. So you're ready for this punchline. Be, be stunned. Okay? <laughs> the reason Jesus gives us a song of praise for a spirit of heaviness, put on a garment of praise in this or a spirit of heaviness is true praise fosters the heart. I heard like much. That's okay, it took me a couple of times to get through this one as well. True praise fosters the heart. So for us, for those of us who like to get into the mechanics of things, why are we supposed to sing a song that celebrates someone else when I'm going through a lot of trouble? It's because that someone else, first of all, is our Savior. But also, in, in the heaviness that we are, in the oppression that we... Um, and this is specifically in, you know, times, tough times. This, is, this goes without saying, talking about, without talking about, um, you know, times when things are going absolutely amazing, because that's when we should be praising as well. Think about uh, Jesus and the ten lepers. One came back when they were healed. We should be praising all the time, but in, specific, in, in the specific context of us under pressure in tough times, when oppression is there, when things are just not working out. You know, all of us will have some, sort, some form of circumstance that we can point to. What does praise do? True praise helps us realize 
where we are at relative to our Savior. And not He is up there and I'm down here. What does true praise mean? It means an expression of respect and gratitude. What do we sing? In the, in the Bible, um, many songs have been, you know, what did Moses write? He defeated the enemy. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is my Savior. Pick any true song. Any one of the songs. You know, David went all in. He was like, my life sucks. You know, you've abandoned me. And I feel abandoned. And I feel depressed. My bones are wasting away. But yet, you are the Lord and you have saved me. So praise postures our hearts to remember or to remind ourselves where are we and where should our focus be? That is the most important because then it becomes less about ourselves. I have two examples I'd like to mention of this. And one is in, in Acts 16 with Paul and Silas. So the story is that not the story, the account. You know, it's not a Bible story, it's a, Bible, it's a biblical account. So Paul and Silas are in Philadelphia, they're busy planting a church, and you know, they, they are minding their own business in that sense. They are busy you know, loving on people, they are, the church is growing. And there's this, there's this slave girl, this, this girl that keeps on following them around. Now, word out on the street is that this girl made her owners a lot of money because she's good at fortune telling. Okay. But so for whatever reason, she keeps on following Paul and Silas around for days, saying, these guys know the gospel. Follow them. And Paul just got so annoyed at this. He's like, stop, just after, after I wrote, let's say day four. He's like, in the name of Jesus, Spirit, I cast you out of me. And then the Spirit leaves. And her owners have lost their most valuable asset. She can't fortune tell anymore, and they are livid. But just think about the context of this. Like, if you know supernatural things are happening in Philadelphia, and you're letting your slave girl follow them around, at some point, something's going to happen, right? Yet these owners, they are livid. So Paul... Remember, Paul and Silas, Silas they're, they're minding their own business. They, they, they ignored her for a couple of days. Like, we're just going to focus on preaching the gospel. Until Paul just gets so annoyed and says, listen, out. Just go. And now, because he did that, free someone, the whole city is in uproar. Comes and grabs and throws him into a Roman prison. Now, I actually Googled a Roman prison this morning just to see what it looks like. And uh, the, the pictures they have is basically, it's just like the stone enclave and a hole. That's what, that's what they throw people into. Sometimes they throw people down that hole, which is meant to be the toilet. So think about this. You've got this mission. God sent you out. You're minding your own business. Something happens, and suddenly the whole city is in uproar, and you get chucked into prison. And Paul and Silas are like, well, might as well praise while we're down here. And I think you know the rest of the story. If you don't, it's such a great account where the Holy Spirit shows up, shakes up the whole prison, and then another revival starts. And the point I'm trying to make with this example is they could have been like, my word. We're just, we're just we're, Lord, we're trying to do your work here. Now we're being, now we're being you know, thrown into the prison. But they did not let a he spirit of heaviness even get to them because they decided, well, you know what, we're just going to sing songs. We're going to sing songs and praise. It's a dark, cold place. Stones are hard. You can't even really, you know, sleep properly. You know, for, for those of us over 30, I didn't know you could wake up injured in a normal bed. It's, you know. So now you're in a stone prison. And the Holy Spirit shows up. But that's because I wasn't, I wouldn't say it's, oh, because we praise the Holy Spirit came. Holy Spirit came, does what the Holy Spirit does. But they did not allow 
a spirit of heaviness to get to that. One more example. Samuel, First uh, Samuel 20, chapter 20 to 22, is a, an account of David, where it's already things are already dodgy with Saul, King Saul, and um, David and Jonathan. So Jonathan is Saul's son, and they're pretty tight, and they uh, things think like Saul is getting jealous of David. And at some point, Saul just snaps and says, I want David dead. Imagine the type, of, the type of shock and probably trauma you have to go through when you've been serving faithfully, you've, you've won great victories for your country, and suddenly the king wants you dead and you find yourself running. You leave everything. Imagine this. You leave everything now. You leave your car. You leave... Your, your apartment, you leave everything and now you have to run out the end too because they're looking for you. That's it. That's it. You just go. And then he makes it into another country, or Gath, and he ends up in front of another king and th these, uh, his soldiers actually recognize David and say, but isn't this, isn't this the person who they wrote these songs about? That Saul slays thousands, but David ten thousands. And it says there, Samuel and David was, was full of fear. And then he gets this brainwave. As he gets taken into the, king, into the king's chambers, he starts acting like a complete lunatic. Right? Um, what, what if that was Holy Spirit inspired? I don't know. But maybe you know, it was, it was, he was also a cunning man. So he like, starts drooling in his beard, whatever, and, and this king says, this is a crazy guy. Like, why did you bring him to me? Just let him go. And that's where Psalm 34 comes from. That's what, 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 um, what David wrote when David wrote Psalm 34. Renati, would you mind reading Psalm 34, verse 1 to 4? She was religiously taking notes, that's why she says. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glory the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Does that sound like optimism to you? Does that sound like, no, we just need to keep a positive attitude? It sounds like praise. That's what praise sounds like. I'm going to ask um, my wife Michelle to come up and share a testimony. Why are you laughing at me already? I haven't even said anything. Um, so a few weekends ago, we attended a worship conference called Zeal. And um, going into the, that weekend, I was just feeling quite down. I feel like um, just your, I've, my circumstances, I think, was just, um, I felt quite, you know, just heavy that weekend and struggling with my circumstances. And so it's a worship conference. It's all about like, it's lots of the Friday evening we were just praising from what time it starts, 7 until 12 at night. So it was just a whole worship evening. And um, now I'm standing there and we're singing all these songs and I just, I just, you know, I struggled so much to get myself to, to feel the feelings, let's say that. And um, I, and I think we were singing something about being in the valley and I, I think just in that moment I was just sharing what I was feeling with the Lord and I just told him like, flip, I don't even feel like I'm just in the valley, I feel like I'm in the Grand Canyon because it's just not ending, like it's, and um, I felt in that moment, he showed me a picture of, as I was walking in this valley, um, I think I was imagining the Fish River Canyon, because we hiked there last year, the year before, sometime. Um, and I saw this picture of me walking there, and as I started singing, the sound of my praises were causing rock slides, and almost like making 
like making the valley low, causing exit routes out of the valley because the rocks were just falling in. And I saw him show me that, that picture and um, I just felt so encouraged by it. So I, yeah, I, I started joining in the praise and I, I think it started out with a choice um, and the feelings followed later, I think, as Louis also said, with the posture. So I can't say that my circumstances changed during the weekend or even now, but um, my spirits were definitely lifted. True praise, posture is the heart. And sometimes it looks supernatural. Sometimes it's a bowl and seamless moment. I've, prayed, I've played at um, events where, where we just had worship and people would, would, would get healed. Not because of the cool songs we wrote and played, but because the Holy Spirit healed in praise. Where people have been set free from depression. And I've also praised the Lord in my room, trusting Him for a miracle. We're still trusting Him for miracles. And these things haven't happened yet. We're still wondering why. But it postures the heart. So this is an encouragement. I'm going to ask the, the, the praise team to start coming up so long. And this is why we're going to get practical. Maybe where you are at this point in time, you're kind of in that, that Grand Canyon Valley thing. And you're just not seeing a way out. Maybe you've been trusting the Lord for breakthroughs for a while. And just things that just seems like things that are not coming your way. And then it's not that where you are at is irrelevant, but maybe we just need to posture our hearts a little bit and and trust God to restore faith. Trust God to restore joy. I've got a, a verse here that I'm going to treat as a, as a call to action. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. And uh, this, this was um, something we, we heard, something Jock um, from one of the elders from uh, Cape Town City where, where we had a joint service with last, last Sunday. Just, I sat there, I don't remember any, any much else from the sermon because this thing hit, just hit me, it was like a, on the, on the forehead where I was like, oh, oh this, is, this is just so practical. And uh, if, uh, you know, if, if it doesn't seem practical, I pray for the revelation to, to fall. From verse 16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks for this. Thanks in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So if you're wondering, you know, if, if the whole song singing, song singing thing is, is still a bit, might be a bit awkward when you're alone or not, there are many other ways to express praise. If you're stuck, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do your circumstances matter? Yes, but also no. This is the will of Christ Jesus for you. And sometimes it's hard to grapple with. I grapple with this often. But I must say, we... Uh, I, I actually made it a, a bit of a house rule since Sunday. Um, sometimes to, to Michelle's annoyance, I'm like, come, we need to go sit down and we're going, to, and I read the scripture and, we, and I say, okay, what are we going to rejoice in today? And then we go, who are you praying for and who am I praying for today? Right now. And it's never longer than, than 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be a big thing. And then what are we going to give thanks for right now? And it's, it, the results have been really interesting, if I can put it like that, because it's sometimes she's, she's, she's annoyed with me, and I'm like, no, no, we need to go and do this now. 
It was probably my fault, but... Okay, so her defense is like, sometimes I, I, wanted, I, wanted, uh, I want to do this exactly when she wants to go to bed and she's tired. Which is, which is not, I mean, she goes to bed at nine. And I'm a bit more of a, like a, like a midnight owl type of thing. So we have to find the balance. Uh, but the point being, and, and, in some, and sometimes I just, I'm not listening. I'm like, you know, why, like, does, this, is, does this mean anything? And sometimes we've just had an argument. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to pray. But every single time, I, I kid you not, every single time we've, we've sat down, even if it was just mechanically going through it, not feeling like we want to, but every single time, we've finished, and this is, this is 10, 15 minutes max, we've finished being, both of us being on the same page, you know, so I, I remember one specific time, she'd had a ridiculously busy day, and things were just not, not going right, and, and, that, and I was like, okay, well, let's, let's do this. And we'd, we'd rejoiced, we'd found things that we really rejoice in, even if there's, you can't think of, of anything specific. Rejoice in the fact that we have salvation. Rejoice in the fact that we have peace in this country from a, let's call it a macro percent. We are not a country at war. Rejoice in the fact that we have the gift of the Spirit. Rejoice in the fact that we have a church that we can come together in. Rejoice in the fact that we have a great community. Rejoice in the fact that you could get out of bed with all your limbs this morning. For those of us who do have all our limbs. Rejoice in the fact that you have a great health for that which is working. Be thankful. And the amount of times that we've, we, that, that we've, or this whole week, there have been a couple of times where we just, where we got up and, and both of us were like, wow, we really needed this. So take, if you remember nothing else, remember these two things. One, praise fosters the heart. That is how you put on a garment of praise. For a spirit of heaviness. Number two, go and use the scripture as a starting point. First Thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of Christ Jesus. Thank you for listening. Remember that our sermon audio and videos are also available on Shofar TV. Go to www.shofaronline.tv to download and share.